What's up, YouTube? This is going to be a short video covering density altitude as a variable input in your ballistic solver for long range shooting. So, before we start talking about density altitude, let's cover external ballistics. So, when it comes to external ballistics or what is happening to the bullet in flight, you have four basic forces you have drag which is the energy it takes for the bullet to displace air as air molecules as it moves through it. You have gravity, which is the earth trying to pull the, or the force that tries to pull the bullet back down to earth. You have gyroscopic progression or spin drift. I'm going to link to a, a great video discussing that at length. There's just not enough time here to talk about it. And you have Coriolis effect, which is basically the fact that as the bullets in flight, the earth is going to be moving underneath it relative to the flight of the bullet. Okay, so what is density altitude? According to Wikipedia, density altitude is the altitude relative to the standard atmosphere conditions at which the air density would be equal to the indicated air density at the place of observation. In other words, density altitude is air density given as a height above mean sea level. Density altitude can also be considered to be the pressure altitude adjusted for non-standard temperature. Huh. When I read that, it didn't really help me much. So let's simplify that a little bit. So first of all, you have to consider the fact that air is, in fact, a fluid. It doesn't seem like it because we walk through it and breathe it every day, but it is. It is a fluid made up of many different gas molecules. As a bullet flies through the air, it must displace those molecules, thus creating drag. So earlier we talked about is drag being a major factor in external ballistics. In fact, it's one of the greatest factors. Drag is a direct factor of the BC of the bullet and the amount of air molecules the bullet must displace to move through the air. So in simple terms, when we're measuring density altitude, the higher the density altitude, the thinner the air is. So the less molecules there are for the bullet to push out of the way, the less is drag and part on the bullet. Conversely, the lower the density altitude, the thicker the air is. So if you're on a mountain at 5,000 feet on a 90 degree day, your density altitude is going to be a lot higher than if you're at sea level on a cool evening at 60 degrees. So <clears throat> what are some advantages of using density altitude? Why do, we, why do we use it? Well, the big reason is it's one input instead of three inputs for measuring the air resistance that the bullet feels. So instead of having to input temperature, humidity, and altitude, and the ballistic solver having to combine those and create a density altitude, we can just input the density altitude. So it's one number to input, which reduces task saturation. If we use density altitude as the metric for our drop charts, it makes our drop chart simpler. It does reduce the computing time for ballistic solvers, but on modern computing devices, that's, I mean, we're talking milliseconds. And it's also useful when you can't use station pressure. So what station pressure is, is your ballistic solver goes out over the internet, gets the environmental information from some weather station somewhere, and then inputs that data to come up with your solution. Well, if you're like me, where I go shooting at, Number one, there's not signal, and even if there was, the nearest weather station is probably 40 miles away, for, so that information is basically useless. So what are some disadvantages? There's really one big one and one kind of smaller disadvantage. The big one is, to use density altitude, you have to have an expensive weather meteor, period. It's, you're not gonna, most weather stations aren't going to have it, and the ones that do are going to be at an airport, so unless you do your long-range shooting right next to an airport... It, that's not going to be useful for you. And the use case is limited. If you have a weather meter meter good enough to have density altitude, it probably has Bluetooth, and you probably are using a smartphone that has Bluetooth, and your ballistic software probably allows the pairing of your weather meter to your solver so it can just pull the data in automatically. So that's ballistic so that's density altitude, I'm sorry, in a nutshell. Now I'm going to show you a short video on my cell phone of me using my ballistic software and using density altitude for the environmental variables. Okay, so we're gonna set up our ballistic program to use density altitude. 
I'm going to do this with Applied Ballistics. It's the one I use. I highly recommend it. Um, the guy who wrote it or wrote the ballistic solvers for it is Brian Litz. He also writes a book called Applied Ballistics. It's outstanding. I'll link it in the description of the video. So we're going to go in here. We're going to check our preferences. So we're going to make sure Use Density Altitude is selected. And if you happen to have a Bluetooth capable, capable Kestrel, you can pair it right here. See, mine's already paired. Okay. So you pick your rifle, pick your ammo. I do my charts out to 1800 yards. And then you just enter a density altitude. So the way I do this is I take the density altitude of the day I zeroed which in my case it was a warm day so it was 3,088 feet or whatever it was and then I'll do in 2,500 foot increments two below and two above or whatever you want to do you can do one below or one above and just have more charts so what we'll do as an example 2,000 okay trajectory let me make sure that that's not enabled. What your trajectory? And there you have it. So you just click here, you send it to yourself, and then we'll go into the screen and I'll show you just a real quick Excel spreadsheet that I whipped up to use for a drop chart. Now, if you want to do this in real time where you're not using a chart, you're just using your smartphone, and you want to pull real-time data <clears throat> what you can do is go in here and say start Kestrel atmosphere and it should pull from my Kestrel there you go and it'll start updating the data and you can either say it's at 700 yards instead of doing the table you can do 700 yards you can do single shot it'll give you your windage and your lead down here if you change the wind so this is cool so <clears throat> if your first shot's at 700 then you're gonna go to I don't know 750 765 or even 800 we'll say you can just hit the up and down button and then you have a five mile an hour wind we'll do 10 at 90 degrees So you can just keep this open and, and make whatever adjustments you need to make on the fly. It'll continually update with a delay of about two seconds with your Kestrel. It'll continually update your environmental variables. So that's how you can use a weather meter, excuse me, a weather meter that's capable of density altitude in Bluetooth connected to enter your um, variables into your ballistic solver or use your ballistic solver that supports the use of density altitude to create your drop charts. Okay so here's a real quick down and dirty drop chart I worked up um, using density altitude as a metric. So over here you have the range I did meters in yards this is just a simple mathematic formula so I did all my meters first and then I used this formula to calculate that uh, that meter range in yards. I have my spin drift calculated here that remains pretty constant. And then I have just a bunch of various um, density altitude readings. Now <clears throat> you're going to want to set these charts up with your adjusted muzzle velocity. So <clears throat> really you should probably only use three columns and I probably only will use three columns. But at this density altitudes, I'll have an idea of the pressure range. So I will create this spreadsheet with these density altitudes at the muzzle velocity I'd expect to see, which is this is, these are pretty high DA, so these are probably warm days. So I'm probably closer, you know, to 2850. And then the next one down, it'll be closer to say 2750. And then the, getting down to DAs around sea level, that's probably closer to, you know, maybe 2,600. 
you're just gonna have to experiment it with with your rifle and your loads to kind of figure out what works best for you so here's our different density reading so when i go to the field i pull out the old kestrel i've already set up my home screen to show density altitude temperature and one other thing i forget density altitude is the most important one i'm going to look at oh wind speed it'll show wind speed on my home screen anyways so i'll pull out the old kestrel and it'll say my density altitude is 2565 right so that's closest to here so i'll use this drop chart and this is real simple it gives you the your your drop and in my case, this is in mils, so it says down or up, depending upon what the range is, um, the velocity at that range, and the energy. I set mine up to highlight yellow when the velocity of the energy starts getting low, and then red if it's if it's subsonic or the energy is below 850 foot-pounds. Where did I get 850 foot-pounds? It just seems to be the low threshold people use for... Um, hunting deer, right? They don't want to go below 850 or 1,000 foot-pounds. That's really all arbitrary, not the topic of this video. But this is how your drop chart can be highly simplified and yet extremely useful when you use density altitude instead of temperature, humidity, and altitude and all those sort of things.